Upper Wimpole Street in central London, an offshoot of Wimpole Street, home to medical professions and sciences for many years. But is there a more otherworldly and mysterious side to this smart Marlebone thoroughfare? There's every chance that there is, and I went to find out. For it is here that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle penned the first five short stories of Sherlock Holmes for Strand magazine in 1891. In a literary sense, Conan Doyle spent some of his most significant hours here it appears they were not happy ones. He complained that his writing of the fictional detective took his mind off what he called better things. So what were those better things? It could be the pursuit of his very real belief in fairies, or possibly something just as strange but far more secretive and arcane. Conan Doyle was a member of a bizarre occultist organisation called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which was founded in 1887 and dissolved in its initial incarnation in 1893. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was devoted to the study and practice of various esoteric traditions. Prominent members who joined Sir Arthur Conan Doyle included Alistair Crowley and W.B. Yeats. These individuals played significant roles in the organisation's history and contributed to its mystical teachings. As the name suggests, the Order's beliefs and practices were rooted in Hermeticism, but also focused on Kabbalah, astrology, alchemy and ceremonial magic. The organisation sought to explore the hidden realms of existence and unlock the secrets of the universe. Central to the Golden Dawn's philosophy was a set of esoteric teachings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus. Trismegistus, often considered a legendary or mythical figure, is associated with a fusion of Greek and Egyptian wisdom. The name translates to Thrice Great Hermes and is attributed to a mythical teacher who possessed profound knowledge in various disciplines, including alchemy, astrology and other mystical arts. In Hermeticism, Hermes Trismegistus is revered as a symbol of divine wisdom and the source of the Hermetic teachings. The Corpus Hermeticum, a collection of philosophical and mystical writings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, explores topics such as the nature of God, the cosmos and the spiritual path. These texts, dating from the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, played a crucial role in shaping the Hermetic tradition. Hermes Trismegistus is often depicted as a wise teacher and guide, embodying the Greco-Egyptian spiritual synthesis. The teachings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus influenced various mystical and esoteric movements throughout history, including the Renaissance Hermetic Revival and, as we've seen, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. While the historical existence of Hermes Trismegistus remains uncertain, the symbolic importance attributed to this figure has endured. The ancient wisdom of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn emphasised the interconnectedness of all things and the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment. It integrated hermetic principles into its rituals and ceremonies, using them as a foundation for its magical practices. Members studied the Tree of Life, a symbolic representation of divine emanations, to gain insights into the structure of the universe and the nature of God. The Kabbalistic framework provided a systematic approach to understanding the spiritual realms and the relationships between various aspects of existence. Astrology played a significant role in the Golden Dawn's practices, with members delving into the study of celestial bodies and their influences on human life. The organisation believed the positions of the planets and stars could be harnessed to enhance magical workings and spiritual development. Astrological knowledge was integrated into rituals to align practitioners with cosmic forces. Alchemy, the ancient practice of transforming base metals into gold and achieving spiritual enlightenment, was embraced by the Golden Dawn. Members explored the symbolic and spiritual aspects of alchemy, seeking inner transformation and the purification of the soul. Alchemical symbolism was woven into the organisation's rituals, connecting the physical and metaphysical realms. Ceremonial magic was also a central focus of the Golden Dawn's practices. Rituals were meticulously designed and performed to invoke specific energies, entities or spiritual states. The Order structured its ceremonies around a series of initiations, each revealing deeper mysteries and insights to the practitioners. 
The use of magical tools, symbols and sacred geometry was integral to Golden Dawn rituals. The Golden Dawn also incorporated a hierarchical system with three main grades, Neophyte, Zelator and Theoricus, each representing a stage of initiation and spiritual development. Advancement through these grades involved intense study, ritual work and the mastery of esoteric knowledge. Members aspired to progress through the ranks, gaining access to deeper teachings and mysteries. But all wasn't well with the Golden Dawn, and it faced internal conflicts, and eventually disbanded in the early 20th century. However, its legacy persisted through the influence it had on later occultists and magical traditions. The notorious figure of Alistair Crowley went on to establish his own mystical order, incorporating and expanding upon the teachings he acquired during his time with the Golden Dawn. So, was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle practising occultist rituals and magic in Upper Wimpole Street? It is not certain, but the secret society did meet in London's Kensington at the time, and what we do know is that Conan Doyle was there writing Sherlock Holmes stories under sufferance. In November 1891, he wrote to his mother, I think of slaying Holmes and winding him up for good and all. He takes my mind from better things. But the author's mother responded, You won't, you can't, you mustn't. A magnificent body of work was the result of this perseverance and motherly persuasion, and it is Holmes that Conan Doyle is best remembered for, not his occultist tendencies. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description, or via YouTube Super Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.